In ancient days, men looked like this. Please tell why, Everett. Well, shaving was a painful job. They didn't have Gillette. If they had lived in modern times, used blue blades super keen, well, then they would have looked like this. Yes, we see what you mean. To look sharp every time you shave. To feel sharp and be on the ball. Just be sharp. Use Gillette blue blades for the quickest, slickest shaves of all. Hank Bauer, who went into bat for Noren and reached base on the error by Cox, is now playing right field. Last half of the sixth inning, and the Dodgers have Campanella, Hodges, and Shuba as their first three batters. Joe Black, who showed uh, the results of heavy duty in this series and was removed, may find that his pitching counterpart in this series, Allie Reynolds, it may be battling the same situation, arm fatigue. The Dodgers uh, in the last inning hit some balls real hard off Reynolds after Alley had come in the fourth inning with the bases loaded, none out, relieving Lopat and got out of the jam with but one run being scored. That charged to Lopat. Only a great catch by McDougal on a vicious liner by Robinson saved Alley in the last of the fifth. So here we are now, last of the sixth, 3 2 New York. High ball one to Campanella. Roy bounced to Lopat and beat out a bunt on him. But now the Chief is working. There's a liner into the right field for a base hit. Taken on a hop by Bauer. The throw comes back into Martin, and now the tying run is on first, and Hodges up. And the signal goes out to the Yankee bullpen for Vic Rashi to get up. There's Rashi getting up, and maybe someone else. Let's see. Possibly Bob Kazava or Tom Gorman. It's Bob Kazava, a left-hander. Hodges has hit two balls hard today, one to deep center and a liner to left. It's a ground ball out to Rizzuto. Rizzuto to Martin for one. Back to Mize. Double play. That's the seventh double play for New York, and again, Hodges hit the ball hard. Rizzuto had a tough chance to handle as he flashed to his right. That ball, I don't know whether you can see it on your screen or not, but that ball was well hit. And now Casey Stengel is going out to talk to Barra. Not going out to talk to Reynolds, he's talking to Yogi. He wants to find out how Reynolds is, I presume, or either wants to tell him to go out and tell Allie how to pitch to Shuba or to remind him about uh, how they want to pitch to him, any number of things. Of course, Casey knows Reynolds, and he might have told Yogi, go out there and ask Allie, does he think he's got it or not? The chief has got it where the heart is, and when he's had his rest, he's got it where the arm is. But after all, he and Joe Black both are human beings, and they've really done their duty in this series. So here we are with George Shuba single to center and struck out two down last the sixth three two New York. Curve is swung on hit sharply the second grabbed by Martin to Mize. Sides retired. The inning started out promising but Hodges sharp rap was gobbled up by the scooter and converted it converted into the double play the key play of the inning. No runs one hit no errors no one left on. And the score at the end of six innings with totals. The Yankees, three runs, seven hits. Three errors, five left on. Brooklyn, two runs, seven hits, one error, and five men left on. The Gillette Safety Razor Company is happy to bring you these telecasts. And folks, that reminds me. How are you fixed for blades? 
And now let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. WNBT, New York, Channel 4. While the action was going on in the last of the sixth inning, in the, during the course of the final batter, Jim Turner, the Yankee pitching coach, went down to the bullpen to talk to both Rashi and Kazava. Kazava sat down. Rashi is still warming up. And now Turner is signaling again. He's out in front of the Yankee dugout. And let's see. Reynolds is scheduled to lead off in the top of the seventh. There's Casey walking around. I don't know what they're signaling about. Ralph Howick is running in from the bullpen. He can't get the signal. Now Turner is going down there himself. Number 31 with the mitt. Charlie Silvera. There's a big build up to a terrific letdown. Seems it always going on was that Turner wanted to get a mitt out there unless uh, Les Houck is going to be used as a pinch hitter. Houck evidently is going to hit for Reynolds. Ralph Howe was called out of the bullpen and he is going to hit for Reynolds which would tend to indicate that Reynolds must have hurt his back yesterday or has hurt his arm or just doesn't feel right. We can only speculate now back to down to the bullpen go Ray Scarborough and Johnny Sane. And here's Ralph Howe batting for Reynolds seventh inning strike. Houck is the Yankees number three catcher plays very sparingly and that's why we were amazed when we saw him running in that he was going to be the pinch hitter for Reynolds There's a hit smash to third Cox bounces picks it up throws in time one away and the batter is Gil McDougal. Grounded to short, grounded to third, grounded to second. Most managers like to save their best pinch hitters for the latter stages of the game, particularly when they're ahead. And so that may have been the reason for his using Hawk here instead of someone perhaps like Jim Bridewiser. Gil McDougal. One down, top of the seventh. Yanks three, Dodgers two. Outside, ball one. Slow delivery, ball two. That was real slow. Vic Rashi nearest the stands and Johnny Sane warming up for New York. Strike one. Got the inside corner. Two balls, one strike. Seventh inning, one out. Took a good cut at that one. Strike two, two and two. There's 
There's a liner just over Robinson's head, dropping into right center for a base hit. Carl Perillo tosses back into Robinson. A soft liner. And McDougal is on with a single to right field, right center. His fourth hit of the series. Up comes Rizzuto. Grounded to first, double to left, and line to short. That prompts renewed activity in the Dodger bullpen. Number 17, Carl Erskin. Number 30, Billy Lowe's. Chuck Dressen to the front of the dugout to see what's going on down there. One on, one out. Yanks three, Dodgers two, seventh inning. And the final third of the ball game, unless we go extra innings. Bill bunts beautifully down third baseline. Cox up with the ball. Nice play. And he gets him. Billy Cox making a beautiful play on an excellent bunt. It's a sacrifice for the scooter. Though his intention was to try and beat that one out. With one out already. So now with two down. McDougal on second. The batter's Mickey Mantle. Struck out, grounded at first, and hit a home run. Now he'll switch around and bat right-handed against Preacher Rowe. Yesterday, when a similar situation arose, in the ninth inning, when the Preacher came in with runners on first and second and one out, Mantle swung around on him, and though the catcher didn't step wide of the plate, yet Rowe didn't give him anything good to hit at, and walked him, then got the next two men who were left-hand batters. There's a liner to left center for a base hit. Here comes McDougal, rounding third, coming in to score as Snyder's throw goes in to Reese. The magnificent Mickey, just 20 years old, driving in his second run, his fifth in the series, and his 10th base hit. That ties Mantle with Snyder and Reese for most hits in the series at 10. Strike, Yankees four, the Dodgers two. The Yankees have scored one run in each of the fourth, fifth, sixth, and now the seventh innings. Mize walked, single to left and single to right, two for two. All off black. There's a fly ball to right field going over for Sprillo into the bullpen, foul territory, makes the catch. Mize hits a foul fly to Perillo. One run, two hits, no errors, one left on. And so at the middle of the seventh inning, the score is Yankees four, Dodgers two. When you talk to big league baseball and football players about shaving, you'll find that just about every one of them uses the Gillette Super Speed Razor. Saul Rogovin says, The Gillette Super Speed makes shaving much faster and easier. Now listen to Norm Stanley. In my opinion, no amount of money can buy a handier, easier shaving razor. Now a tip from Ken Cavanaugh. For easy and refreshing shaves every time, I'll take Gillette Super Speed over all others. Men with the Gillette Super Speed razor, you change blades instantly. Twist. Zip. Twist. You get this superb shaving instrument plus blue blade dispenser with safety compartment for used blades and styrene travel case for only one dollar. The, uh, the new Yankee pitcher now is Vic Rashi, who worked yesterday's game and was removed in the eighth inning. Down the Dodger bullpen, you've got Erskine and Lowe's working away. Number 17, Erskine, number 30, Lowe's. And in the Yankee bullpen, nearest the stands is Ray Scarborough, and nearest the foul line is Johnny Sane. Ray. 
Now yesterday, Vic Rashi, in his second start of the series, went seven and two-thirds innings, was removed in the eighth. Vic, all year long, and the last couple of years, has been a great competitor, but a pitcher who has required his full quota of rest to be effective. He has never been an effective relief pitcher. If you will check back through the records, you'll find that he seldom, very rarely, has ever been used in relief. Don't believe he's used in relief at all this season. But he's coming on. Lopat worked three innings and Reynolds three. Reynolds went three innings, allowed three hits, walked one, struck out two, and allowed one run. Now Joe Collins has gone in to play first base as Casey Stengel shifts to the defense. The batter now is Carl Perillo. To strike. Yanks four, Dodgers two, last of the seventh. Perillo twice is grounded to third. There's going to be a lot of moves being made in the next little while. Inside for a ball, one and one. With Erskine and Rowe, uh, rather with Erskine and Lowe's heating up, we may have a pinch hitter for Rowe. Just outside, ball two, two and one. Paid attendance today, 33,195. Two balls, one strike on Carl Perillo. Ball three, inside. Jake Fittler way out of that coach's box, hollering words of encouragement down to Perillo. Ball four, Perillo walks. So the pot keeps boiling. Rocky Nelson is going up to bat for Preacher Rowe, number 32 at the bat rack. Chuck Dressen, the Dodger skipper, coaching at third, making his move. Rocky Nelson hitting for Preacher Row. Yanks four, Dodgers two, last of the seventh. Perillo on first, no one out. Ball one outside. Rashi's having a little trouble with his control. And now Casey Stengel has switched in his bullpen. He has gotten Bob Kazava to throw in place of Scarborough, left-hander, same the right-hander. Strike one. One ball, one strike. One ball, one strike, one on, no outs, last of the seventh. 4-2 New York, tying run at the plate for Brooklyn. Ball two outside. There's Cookie Lavaghetto out in front of the Dodger dugout, slapping his hands together. Doc Wendell to the trainer just to the left. Two balls, one strike. Rashi has just come on. Has had difficulty with his control to walk Perillo. 2-1 count on Nelson. Batting for O, and then you have the top of the Dodger order. There's a fly ball foul down the right field line and out of play. The count is two and two. There's Casey Stengel slapping his hands together as he comes off the Yankee bench. 
And I'm telling you, they're just coming off the benches with every pitch. Billy Martin goes in to talk to Rashi. I remember Red Barber and I, who had the privilege of working the 1947 World Series together, I remember one thing that we said when it was all over. It. Where are we going for a long rest? Remember that, Red? It's the way we feel now. And I know you do too. This has been a series. Never be forgotten. Two balls, two strikes, Brill off first. Nelson lifts a high pop to short. Rizzuto under it. He almost lost it in the sun, had a little difficulty. Billy Cox, the batter. Struck out, grounded to third, and double to right center. Grim determination on Billy's face. The seriousness of the situation exemplified and revealed beautifully by our fine cameras. Ball one, just a little outside. Now you've gotten to the stage of the game where both sides are going to be a little touchy about the call in those close pitches. Navigato just hollered out to Yogi when Yogi turned and said something to Larry Getz. One ball, no strikes. Ball two, outside. There's Cookie. He's the cheerleader right now. Look at the other Dodgers in the dugout. Tense. And over in the Yankee dugout, tension as they lean forward, occasionally moving around, shifting position, slapping hands together. No more baseball after today. This is it. Every pitch is it. Ball three, low. There's Cookie. He's just tasting the situation. And there are the, the Yankees in the dugout. There's Jim Turner with his knees crossed. Boys moving around and about, and the fans in the stands are doing the same. Three balls, no strikes, one out, one on. 4-2 New York. Strike one, three and one. And the bullpens, both are busy. Erskine and Lowe's, Kazava and Sane. Yogi and Cox at the plate. Billy looking down at Chuck. There's Dressen hollering up there. Rillo on first base, one out. We'll see whether or not he'll be running with the pitch, most likely. We'll see. There he goes, pitch is swung on, hit out the right field for a base hit. Farrell on his way to third, holds up as the throw is, it hits Farrell on the leg. And then Barra goes over to grab it. And so Billy Cox lines a single to right on the 3-2 pitch. And now the lead run comes to the plate for the Dodgers. Boy, I'm telling you, the excitement rides and rides ever higher. These batters just won't leave these pitchers alone, I'll tell you that. And here is one of the most dangerous clutch hitters in the game. Spark plug of the Dodgers. The captain, the little Colonel Pee Wee Reese. And there's Casey Stengel. He's worried. And now Jim Turner. They signal down to the bullpen. And on deck is Duke Snyder. So that's the picture. Morello on second, Cox on first, one out, Yanks four, Dodgers two, last of the seventh. Reese bounces it off, strike one. I guess you heard that one hit up against the wire screen. We're 
we're wondering here right now that what Case will do, barring the long ball, whether Rashi will even pitch to Snyder. But let's wait till that time comes. Low outside for a ball. One ball, one strike. There's Casey hollering to Yogi. Rillo off second. Cox off first, one out. Yanks four, Dodgers two, last to seventh. Peewee at the plate and Rashi ready. Outside, ball two is a curve, two and one. Rashi obviously is not sharp. His control is not there. Two balls, one strike. One away. Low, ball three. We get Cookie Lamaghetto. He really leading the cheers in the Dodger dugout. And now Casey Stengel coming out of the Yankee dugout is Chuck Dressen. Stands at third, wondering. Casey knows that if the Pee Wee should walk, you got the Duke coming up to the bases loaded. Or a pitch that might be too good to Reese. Could be given quite a ride. Case gives Rashi a pat on the back. He's going to leave him in. This is a time when, regardless of who you are, you need more than just a pat on the back. Down to the bullpen, Kazaba and Sane, both getting ready. Erskine and Lowe stopping to watch the action. Strike two, got the inside corner. So you've got a full count. Man alive, this crowd is ready to roar. They're coming up out of their seats almost in every pitch. Yanks four, Dodgers two, seventh inning. One out, Barillo on second. Cox on first, Reese the batter. The count three and two. We'll watch the runners. Playing it safe. Ball four, they're loaded up. Out of the dugout, out of the dugout, into the mound goes Casey Stengel. And the Duke is the batter. So, Case may bring in Bob Kazava, a left-hand pitcher. We're not certain. We'll watch him. He's going to have somebody come in. Kazava, Casey Holler to plate umpire Larry Getz. It's Kazava, a left-hand pitcher. Here he comes. While Stengel and Rashi await the arrival of Kazava, off to the right of home plate, the Duke with Jackie Robinson and the Dodger Bat Boy, and Jackie is talking to the Duke. The boy, here's your chance. Kazava, who won eight, lost eight for the Yankees. From Wyandotte, Michigan. A six foot two, 200 pounder. Blue eyes, blonde hair. Who appeared in the World Series last year in relief.
pitched one inning in relief last year. He's had a lot of tough assignments in his career, but none tougher than this one. Now down in the Yankee bullpen, replacing Kazava, is the man a lot of folks thought might start today's game, Tom Gorman. He's uh, warming up next to the railing. Meantime, it's Johnny Sane still throwing. So the stage is set for another great peak. It's been one peak on top of another in what could be the greatest of all World Series. On first base is Pee Wee Reese. On second base is Billy Cox. On third base is Carl Perillo. One out. The Yankees four, the Dodgers two, and the Duke get back. So here we are. Strike one, fastball. Kazava has a fair curve and a good fastball. Side ball one, one and one. Jim Turner hollers out to Martin about something. Three men aboard, one out. Dodgers battling back. Foul ball over the Yankee dugout. Strike two, one and two. Vera calls time now to go out and talk to Kazava. And there's Casey, heart pumping a mile a minute. And who can blame him? The Yankee skipper, hoping to achieve four consecutive World Championships. The Dodgers in here battling valiantly to achieve their first. And this is the day it's gonna be decided. And this could be the moment. Jake Pittler cutting up a storm at first. Three men leading away. The Duke takes a curve inside, two and two. And the car crowd ooing and eyeing. Two balls, two strikes. Ball three. second, Reese on first, and a full count on Duke Snyder. One out. Here's the payoff pitch. It's a high pop up. The infield fly rule is called. The batter's automatically out. McDougal has it. So a tense moment there. And the tension still holds. Because the bases are still loaded and the batter is Jackie Robinson. Under the infield fly rule, if a batter hits a pop-up, which in the judgment of the umpire can be handled by an infielder, with runners on first and second, or first, second, and third, and less than two out, the batter's automatically out. The runners go at their own risk. So Bob Kazava is going to stay in there and pitch to the right-hand batter, Jackie Robinson. Sometimes you can look for a switch. Now, here comes Casey out of the dugout. Let's see. He may still switch. I don't know. Casey goes back in, decides to let Kazava stay with it. Three runners leading away. Strike one foul tipped into off the hand of Yogi. No balls, one strike. Robinson lined to left, beat out of bunt and lined to third. The Dodgers in the dugout, tense with anxiety. And in the Yankee dugout, they're tense with anxiety. I tell you the truth, it just gotten to the point now where it's just past tense. Even though we're playing in the present. 
Brillo on third, Cox on second, Reese on first. Inside for a ball, the counts one and one. Man with every pitch that's thrown. The championship flag is flying. His offer decides to back off a little. Jim Turner comes to the front of the Yankee dugout, hollering something to Kazava. One errant pitch can make the difference. Just outside, ball two. Yogi didn't like the call. Now Getz says something back to Yogi. Veins are starting to pop in the necks of everybody around now. It's rough and tough. Foul ball hit long and deep. Up onto the roof and out of the ballpark. Two and two. There's Case taking a look at that one. On third base is Perillo. On second base, Cox. On first base, Reese. Yanks four, Dodgers two, seventh inning, two down. Two two on Robinson. Ground ball foul. The Gillette Safety Razor Company, delighted to be able to bring you all these peak moments of World Series drama. I just don't believe there's been anything ever any greater in baseball. Three runners ready to lead away. It's a high pop up. Who's going to get it? Here comes Billy Martin digging hard, and he makes the catch at the last second. How about that? There was the ball that the wind held up. And even though it was just a high pop up, Billy Martin still had to lunge for the ball. Man, it's been a great series. It still is. We got two more innings at least to go. And a great job of clutch pitching by Bob Kazava. No runs. One hit, no errors, and three big men left on. The score at the end of seven innings, Yankees four, Dodgers two.